Well, what came up for me was that um, when you start to um, get down to these two triangles where we're talking about two belief, a belief going against a belief. So in other words, I believe that my granddaughter should be doing this, and she believes something else. Okay, well, is there another level where you could actually sit down in compassion and find out what the belief is that's disagreeing with the beliefs? Well, first, yes, and first you have to discover your own, because if the focus stays on your granddaughter, and you and I have had this conversation before, if your focus is on your granddaughter, then you're still missing self-discovery. But when you know what that core belief is, when you really understand what core right. belief of yours is colliding with hers, then you can really begin to understand whether or not uh, this is going to change. Core beliefs do not change quickly. I want to tell you something. We have two kinds of change that we work with. We have two types of change. Okay? We have a state change and we have a trade change. Okay? I'm going to... There's two kinds of changing. There's a state change and a trait change. Watch this. Everybody stand up real quick. Just stand up. Stand up. Turn to someone, give them a high five, and say, you're awesome. 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 Okay, have a seat. Go quiet and feel the energy in the room. Now stand up again, give each other two high fives and say you're the most amazing person I've ever met. You're the most amazing person I've ever met. Have a seat. Go quiet and feel it. A little bit higher energy in the room. That's a state change. That is what our DC staff do with your kid all day long. You can do anywhere from uh, one, just by getting out of bed, to a thousand of these a day. State changes happen all the time. A state change is, I'm feeling this is, this is one that uh, happened with Ty the other day. Uh, not uh, uh, last week, the week before. Ty was just in a mood, sourpuss mood. And Suzanne walked out with a tutu on. And Ty cracked up, state change. And the mood changed, so the conversation changed. How long did it last? Very short. This is what the therapists are working on. Stop drinking. Stop cutting. Stop using. Stop running away. This is what a therapist works on. And remember, our therapists work with your kids daily. 11 hours of therapy in a week. So we can do it in four months. But if you're seeing a the therapist one hour a week, so many do the math right here. 11 hours a week, four months worth of change. 44 months. 44 months. So one, so one hour a week would be 44 months, which is three and a half years. Then you got to take into account that Maria scares around for the first three quarters. Of the it's session. true. <laughs> it's true, except the whole time seeds are being planted. The idea for the first three months that nothing is happening is the misnomer. I, I was actually meaning with her therapist, the hour a week, she screws around for the first three quarters of the session. So that is same, same principle mm -hmm. lies. Screwing around doesn't mean it's not getting in. Just because they don't answer your text doesn't mean they didn't read it. Okay, so the state change, we're going to do as many as we can in a day. The, the kids feeling this way, well, it's time for morning exercise. And now it's time for chores. And you can watch the state change depending on what the kids are doing. And the more we can invoke, great. So after 26,000 of these, we might invoke one of these. Might is the word I used. But they are two different kinds. This is the therapeutic and this is the empowerment. This is our DC team, our mental health tech team. This is our therapeutic team. So there are two types of changes we're looking for. The one you brought your kid in for is this lower one. We get there, but in the meantime, we're gonna pepper it with these. This is how many seeds you plant in a day. Hopefully one tree grows. Questions about this? 
So is that what we're supposed to be doing once they get home? Is For yourself, the yes. The day, planting these. For yourself, yes. Okay. Because that sounds will, exhausting. Yes, it is. <laughs> it, it is until where's my ninety nine and one back on there. That ninety nine percent of the time to conquer the one percent. And what what I said is huge. You are not your child's therapist, nor are you a child's empowerment coach. And when you practice this for yourself, that is the greatest seed you can plant in the child. Because that brings us back to how much did we actually learn from their lectures versus how much did we learn by watching them do what they did. That's the, that's the key piece. We may have learned from their lectures, but what they did has stayed with us. And that's the return to the value system we look for. Teens are going to deviate from the primary value system, whether they're adopted or not. Whether you've had them for 17 years and they're 16 years old, or whether you've, they're 14 years and you've had them for two weeks. They will deviate from the primary value system. Because when they begin to develop self-concept, their first sentence is... Anybody remember what it is? <laughs> this is their first, this is a child's first practice in self-concept. They don't know who they are. All they can do is look at mom and dad and go, I don't want to be that because they limit my freedom, they limit my expression, they limit whatever they're coming up with because that's what their natural development process is saying. You must rebel against the family unit now. That's natural. They're supposed to. They can't become themselves and they are not supposed to become a mini-me version of you. They're supposed to become themselves, but if they don't know what self is, but they know what they don't want self be, they're going to just not be you. And so they're going to try on pants that do not fit. So this is their first form of I am me. I'm not going to do that. At the age of 14, 15, or 16, that we, we have what's called the first vow. And I wonder if you can remember what yours is. The first vow is we say, um, I will never. I will always. It's that one that we make a declaration based on what our parents are or are not doing. I will never. And it's that first time that we actually separate our psyche from our parents in such a way to build towards our future. I will never ground my kid. I will never take my kids electronics. <laughs> I will always make sure I put my kids recital first. Whatever. It starts with some very clear vow of I will always. I will never. Questions about that? Remember, what we're working with is that we're working with the difference between natural development and development that is stuttering. There's something repeating and it's stuck in a loop like the record skipping or the CD's got a, or it's, it's, it's going too fast and we need to actually back it up so that we don't miss anything. It all depends on what happens and every kid we work with has one of those two versions. And then we track it back. Is this a nature or is this a nurture? Is this neurological or is this environmental? 